Spice Island in the Pot is brought to you by Stumpy's Emporium and the Penny Saver Supermarket. Tobago Cocoa Estate. Tobago Cocoa Estate. We're in the middle of the Tobago Cocoa Estate. Alright, ready? Three, two. So when. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Wait, sorry, sorry. Oh, shit, get out there. Okay, one more. This is it. This is it. This is <laughs> Holidays and best wishes from Spice Island in the Pot and me, Arlene, your food designer. Now we have taken a journey into Caribbean Christmas. We made some pastel, sorrel, sweetbread, cake, ham, of course, and then some other things. And now it's time for the big finale, the Christmas lunch. I am setting up a table full of Caribbean flavors fit for a parang of a time. We are making turkey with a rub that's seasoned and moist. So, so yummy. And what's Christmas Day? Without a little pigeon peas cooked down in some coconut milk and fresh seasoning. Gosh, sounding good, eh? Now, every table needs a pie. So, I'm making shepherd's pie, minced beef sandwich between two layers of creamy mashed potato. Nice and full in. Now I like to give my guests some options. Not like Stephen Marley and Pitbull, eh? not like that. More like some seasoned rice with some salad and callaloo. Now with so much cooking to get done, let's start with the turkey. So I have a nice fresh turkey here, defrosted to almost room temperature. So first of all, I want to just un... un do these legs here just by folding this out and I want to get these parts out which would be the neck and sometimes they have um, gravy sauce and things stuffed in there for your convenience so you want to make sure and check and get all those parts out so I'm not doing a traditional stuffing like some people do I'm just gonna put my neck on the side I have my cloth here nice and clean and I'm just gonna pat it dry for my rub so this is ready and also there's no liquid in my tray so i let this defrost i got all the liquid out and then i put my turkey on because the liquid that i wanted to bake in is something really special so this here i'm gonna just do my rub really quickly so i have here some salt that i'm gonna do very generous with the salt because you have to put flavor into the whole thing a little black pepper that seems more like a, like a lot than a little. <laughs> Some parsley flakes there. This is dry thyme, but if you have fresh thyme, you can use that as well. This is this fine thyme here. There we go. Now for the, for the moist stuff. This is minced pimento peppers and garlic. So this is gonna give me a nice moist finish here and some mustard just a little just for the little kick in the meat and you want to spice things up a little bit with a little chili flakes so that is the beginning of my rub right there now before i rub everything together i want to get some butter under the skin of my turkey and this is going to help your turkey stay moist so this is a bit of a messy job so roll up your sleeves Okay, so I'm just gonna lift this skin here, right? And using my knife, I'm just gonna make my way here, right? I'm gonna cut my butter in some small pieces really quickly here, okay? And with one piece, I'm gonna just push this whole thing below the skin here and press it down into the breast of the turkey because a lot of people complain that turkey comes out really dry, so this method helps keep all the, the meat nice and moist so see you get that in there you go as fast as you like as far sorry as you like with this there we go then i'm putting a piece inside and then across here on the legs i want to put a piece here in the middle here between the leg 
tie and breast here and then on this side under the skin perfect and my butter is room temperature so it's easy to work with so that's that part now for my rub so I have all my ingredients here I'm just gonna mix it together nice and even all the nice herbs and seasonings we're gonna rub the turkey down okay so this is all mixed together make sure I put a little bit inside there because you want the flavors to go from inside out and just paste this down onto your turkey kind of just pack it on over there on my legs rub 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 oh shifty there we go so i'm going to just flip this over to this side here this is the back and i have some rub for there as well nice get under the arms ooh, ooh, ooh. it's giving it a really nice color already the mustard is going to give you a nice flavor as well as a nice color. So let's get the neck sorted out as well. We want to flavor everything. Some people want the neck. I'm not a fan, but I make it because you want to give everybody something that they like and enjoy. I'll flip this back here. Put this back. So this is looking really good already. So. Let me just wipe my hands up. There we go. Now, what is going to also help keep this turkey cooking moist is the method. So first, you want to preheat your oven to 375. That's the first thing. Now that you've put this onto your turkey, you're going to add some grapefruit juice. If you get the nice canned grapefruit juice that's concentrated, that is perfect. So you want to use a pan that has a little depth to it and you're going to fill this up here all around. What this is going to do is continue to steam and cook down really slowly so it keeps the meat moist and the rest I will just pour over. Already smelling really good. Now, for the first hour that I bake my turkey, I I'm going to keep it foiled, cook it, cook it most of the way and then uncover it so it gets a nice brown color on top. Sounds good? All right. So we get some foil, cover it up nice and tight. So this is step one to turkey tongue. It's nice and covered. We're gonna let this sit in the oven for an hour to an hour and a half. And then we're gonna uncover it and allow it to get the nice color that it so deserves. So I'm all set up to make my sweet diced red salad. So let's start with the dressing, first of all. So I have, sorry, I have no knife. <laughs> 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 okay so while my turkey is in the oven we're gonna get the shepherd's pie started now you really want to cook smart so the things that take the longest are the things you want to start with right and go down from there so first i have some diced potatoes in a pot of water here this is about five pounds of potatoes i'm gonna go with a little bit of salt not too much because we're gonna add some cheese in here later on and you want to manage that flavor a little bit and a little bit of black pepper just a touch now you know i like to save and preserve things as best as possible so here i have some frozen fresh seasoning that we did from before and i had them in the freezer so i just got them defrosted here you see so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a little bit in this water here this is going to be a nice seasoned flavor for the potatoes it, and you boil this until it's soft. It takes about maybe 20 to 25 minutes. So this is going to be ready for the stove. Now, we have to get that minced beef ready to cook, to go in the middle of those two layers of mashed potatoes. So here I have about one pound of minced beef. 
I'm gonna just do some lemon, which also comes from the freezer because you know citrus is seasonal and it's expensive. So just a little bit of lemon here, a little bit of salt, and you could always adjust the salt when we're cooking it and you taste it, right? So we're just gonna start with a little bit. A little bit of black pepper, some parsley. Right, I have some diced red onions, but I'm gonna start right so that's a good bit now i like a little spice in my thing so i'm gonna put a little bit of chili flakes here and of course my fresh green seasoning so this of course is the sive or spring onions with pimento and garlic and that goes in here perfect and i still have some left so i'm just gonna mix this together Nice and even, and of course you could have done this from before, you could have done it the night before and have it in the fridge, that will work fine too. Anything to help the process, because you don't want to be slaving away all day on Christmas Day, of course you don't. Who wants that? Okay, so now, to this minced beef, while we're cooking it up, you would need to get some sweet corn, some green peas, some carrots, and I like to use tomato sauce instead of tomato ketchup. This gives it a really nice layer of flavor. So I'm gonna head to the stove, get my potatoes up, and start sauteing my beef. Okay, so a nice saucepan here. We just get this up to a nice medium to high heat. My potatoes are getting ready to boil, so let's go. I'm gonna start with a little bit of vegetable oil here and let this heat up nice and hot. And I'm gonna cook my beef with my carrots first because this is actually fresh carrot, not pre-cooked or canned carrots. So I want this to be able to cook. And I use fresh carrot because I really like to get a little crunch in my shepherd's pie, All right? The peas and the corn, however, they are pre-cooked, so they go in at the last, right? So this is kind of hot. Let's see, let's test it out. Seems good to me, right. So we're gonna add the beef here. my carrots, of course. Right. So I like to cook this nice and slow because you don't want it to overcook and you don't want to cook it to a point where when it gets into the oven in between the potato, it, it becomes a different texture. So we're actually not going to cook this for very long. All right. So. Gonna just cook this for about five minutes. I'm gonna put a cover on this. We're gonna hold on and let it simmer in, in all the goodness. So this has been here, nice and simmering. Beef has a really nice color and the carrots are halfway cooked. So now we're just gonna finish this up. So I'm gonna get my tomato sauce in there. There we go. Give this a nice stir. Now you don't want this to be too runny because you have to put it in the pie and you don't want that to be too soft. So we have to add this and have it cooked down to a nice consistency. There we go. Just a little more sauce. Perfect. Okay, so remember this has to go back in the oven so you don't want to cook this too much. This is really nice, nice color here. And now for all the good stuff, we're gonna add our sweet corn here and our green peas. I am going to switch this off here, all right? And just kind of stir everything together. See that? Now that is gonna be in the middle of some cheesy mashed potato and baked again in the oven. Really, really good and very easy as well. Okay, so this is looking really nice. Once my potatoes are cooked, I'm gonna strain them out and I'm gonna show you a really cool, easy way to get mashed potato without the muscle work. So we'll be right back. Anton is going to kill me for saying we'll be right back. So the potatoes are boiled nice and soft and I have them in my mixing bowl 
to go with Mr. Silver, of course. So the trick to easy mashed potato without the leg work is using the paddle attachment to your KitchenAid and making a nice fluffy mashed potato. So let's get that started. So here we go. This up. Perfect. And get in the attachment. Oh. Right. Mm. All right. Oh, nice and slow to start. I'm gonna just kind of get it going a little bit. Okay. Right, so this is going to start getting it nice and soft. And what we're gonna use to get this together is some plain butter, a little bit of evaporated milk or whichever type of milk you prefer. Some cheese, of course, and a little parsley just to give it some little excitement, right? So let me make sure my potatoes are getting all mashed together. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of parsley to this. This is just for a little, a little color, a little excitement, a little green in the in the mashed potato, right? Good. Right. So you want to also do this as hot as possible. When the potatoes are hot, the butter is going to melt easily. Everything is going to combine with it really nice. So I'm going to do a half cup here. If you like it more buttery, of course, you can go ahead and do that. But because I'm also adding cheese to this, I'm only going to do a half cup of butter to this. See? So already this is looking nice and smooth and I didn't really have to work so hard to get it like that. So once the butter is mixed in all together, we can add a little bit of milk. Perfect. That's just about, a, about three quarter cups of milk. Okay. Now it's the fun part because you know I always say you can never have enough cheese. Look at this, this is so nice and fluffy already. So I'm going to start adding my cheese just a little bit at a time. And you want to make sure and leave enough cheese aside so that you can put on top of your shepherd's pie. Because you know you want that nice cheesy golden brown crust when it comes out of the oven. So just a little bit at a time, I'm going to add this cheese here. Cheese is also optional in this instance. If you wanted to do it without cheese, you can. But because it's Christmas and we want to indulge in a little something extra, we're already having so much starch and stews and sauces and sweets on the table. Why not have some, some extra cheese, right? Okay. So that happening. Now I'm gonna up the speed a little bit and this is just gonna get some air in there and make it nice and fluffy, but not for too long, okay? Perfect, right there. So let's get this out. Now this is going to be a little tricky, so you wanna be careful because it's going to be hot. All right, I'm just gonna put this aside. Here. Okay, so I'm using uh, some bakeware, glass bakeware or Pyrex, a Pyrex dish as some people say here. I'm going to get this greased up, some cooking spray, and all the corners nice, all the top. Okay, that seems fine. So you want to spoon your first layer in. Now you have to consider space because you don't want to go too high on top because when it starts to bake, it's going to overflow and it's going to make for a messy oven. So a nice thin layer of potatoes here. See how nice and fluffy? Really nice. Okay. This is a really nice big dish. We're going to have a lot of leftovers. And don't you just look forward to the leftovers at Christmas? You can have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, none of this, another thing the next day. So this is my first nice thin layer of potato hair. I actually have enough here to make two dishes, so I will be making two of these. Because once you slave over a hot stove all day and night, and you put that spread out, you don't want to be in that kitchen for another day, right? 
You want to do as much as you can. Okay, so this is my first layer of potato hair. Now, my minced beef that I cooked up with my carrots and my corn and my tomato sauce. And that tomato sauce has a nice tangy flavor, so it's going to complement the creaminess really nice. So now we go with our beef layer. This is great. It's looking good already, wouldn't you say so? I know, my friends are going to be having such a good time. Hopefully I could get them to leave after this lunch takes place and they're not falling asleep all over the place. Okay, this is my nice layer of beef hair. Perfect. Looks good already. So we have another layer of potato. Nice thin layer on top. And just kind of spread it. Nice thing about this is that it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there's no wrong way. You know, you don't have to be any kind of food artist in order to get this accomplished. So even if it's a little rough, sometimes that even makes makes it feel more homemade, if you will. So people often ask me, they often say, oh, because you work in a restaurant, your, your Christmas lunch must be so fancy and nice. No, it is not. It is the same traditional food because I am by now sick of fancy food at the end of the year. So I just want good old pigeon peas, good old kalu, just regular food. Don't think for a second if you come to my house that it's going to have anything fancy. It's going to be exactly what you're used to. And I miss, I miss it. I often miss cooking just regular food. I have so much demands on making fun, exciting things for the public that it's nice to be able to just cook regular stuff. Okay, so this is my, my layer here. And then, I'm gonna clean up the sides, but we're gonna top this up with some cheese for the melty golden brown goodness. Great. Nice shreds of cheese. Okay, and as a little garnish to the top, just to give it a little, a little excitement, a little jingle bell, if you will, I am going to sprinkle a little parsley. So when it bakes up, you see all those little sprinkles of green. It's going to be really nice. Okay, so this is my shepherd's pie. And I have preheated my oven 350 degrees. Now my turkey also needs to be revealed and get into the nice brown color. So I'm gonna pop this in there and uncover my turkey so it starts to get brown. This wonderful holiday, not to mention love and rum always in the air. But first things first, who loves pastel? Me, I do. Now pastel is a lot of work that I have just, and I do that, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's uncover the turkey so that it could get its nice brown color. Okay, let's go. Have to be careful, this is hot. Okay. Oh, it's already falling off the bone. Can you imagine? Ah, totally, totally gorgeous. Look at that. Doesn't it look moist and good? So this is just going to go back in the oven for it to get a little brown on top, just a little bit. So this is probably just about 45 minutes and then the turkey is all done. So my turkey is getting the nice brown color on the outside and we're almost finished. And I'm right on time because my friends are going to show up any minute. So three more things to make this spread complete. But we're going to do some pigeon peas, of course, because what is Christmas lunch in the Caribbean without some good pigeon peas? And then we're going to do a little seasoned rice. And last, the salad. So let me light up my pots here. Nice medium to high heat on both. And when you're cooking Christmas lunch, you have to cook smart. So you might want to get your four burners working one time. So I'm going to do two things at once. You know, normally here we cook things, we chill out. We, not today, we're busy today because we have people coming. So here I'm going to start with my browning of the brown sugar, right? 
for the peas. We're going to go with some vegetable oil there and a little bit of brown sugar. So you know we have to wait for that to be nice and bubbly before we add in any peas, right? While that is happening there, I'm going to do some vegetable oil here. We're going to do the rice here, nice seasoned rice, very simple. I find that people don't really, you know, go heavy on rice during the holidays. They more look forward to like the pies and things like that. So let me just get this adjusted to, right? Nice. Now my rice is already boiled, but it's not too soft. So by the time I cook it up in the little seasoning here, it's going to be perfect. All right. So let me give this a little stir to get the sugar and the oil together. There we go. Just add a little more oil to this. So this is for my peas. All right, so this oil for the rice is nice and hot. I'm just going to load this a little bit. I just wanted to get the heat here on the rice. So for the rice, we're going to start with just some fresh minced pimento peppers or flavor peppers and some garlic. Let me get a little spoon here. So we're going to start with that. And remember, this is a seasoned rice, so you want to be generous with this, right? So that is going up. Now, you don't want to wait until this, this gets brown. That is not the color that we're looking for. And now any fried rice seasoning would work. Just choose your favorite one and add it into the pot. You know, a part of cooking isn't always using what the other person is using. It's about using your own flavor, your favorite ingredients. Because at the end of the day, you're the one going to have to take credit for this rice, right? Just need a little more vegetable oil in there. Get everything moist and together. Now when I boiled my rice, I didn't add any salt because this seasoning has a, a high sodium content. So this is already coming along nicely there. All right, so once everything is mixed in, what I'm going to do here is get my stove even a little lower than it is now. Right? We're also paying attention to the peas, so let me just give that a little stir, and that is almost ready. So you see, we're cooking with gas today, for sure, for sure, for sure. Right, so as this is really low, here, I'm going to gradually add my rice to this. And a good way to average rice when you're cooking for a whole spread is a quarter cup of the raw rice per person. So that is, you can always measure that out. And then you don't have a lot of, of rice remaining after the spread. So I'm just gonna let this soak in those flavors and my peas, my browning for my peas is ready. So I'm just gonna lower this down and I'm gonna add my peas. Okay, give this a little stir. So I have some diced carrots that I'm going to add here and some diced pumpkin because I like to see my vegetables nice and bright. And then I have some fresh chopped seasoning I'm going to add here. Okay, and we're going to stir this up for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add a little salt to this, then we're going to taste it later for flavor. Just stir this up. Okay, so I'm just going to let this get back to a nice temperature. We're going to continue with our rice here. So I'm going to add the rest of my rice to this. Perfect. Now, I have some fresh chopped celery here that I'm going to add now. This is almost done, so this happens really quickly. All right, so all my rice is there. I have my celery nice and freshly chopped. There we go. Nice, festive, flavorful, perfectly cooked. There we go. Make sure and stir everything. Make sure all the ingredients are spread evenly through the rice. Okay. All right. 
so this is kind of finished. Now, I'll tell you my secret, and I got this secret from my mother. So as, when your rice is finished and you do all the stirring and adding of the veggies and stuff like that, you want to switch this off. And just a little sprinkle of white sugar. That's the magic. All right. There we go. And so my rice is done. So let me attend to these peas. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little more heat here, get this up to temperature and start adding all the other ingredients to this. Okay. So I did boil my peas a little before we went into the stew. So you can boil that ahead of time the day before. Just boil it, not too soft, but just kind of like a pre-cooked kind of status, right? So to this, I am going to add a little bit of ketchup. All right. And stir this in together. So this is gonna help make the gravy for the peas. There we go. Right, now, some time ago when cooking, I had some extra coconut milk and I put them in this little bag here and I had them in the freezer. So I just defrosted for today. And now I have fresh coconut milk that I can use. So we just pour a little in here. Perfect. Okay. So now that we have the gravy kind of started here in the peas, I'm going to mix everything together and I'm going to cover this right here on this nice medium to low fire and allow it to cook. Now, if you think that you want it to be a little more saucy, you add a little more ketchup, a little more coconut milk and a little bit of water just to get as much sauce in it as you see fit. But if you want it to be like a thick kind of peas, then you just cook it down to that thickness. All right. All right. Okay, so these are almost done. I just have to do these cute little salad bowls and then my spread is gonna be ready. I have to get changed so I could greet my guests, set up the table and get everything ready. So I'm gonna do my salads now. Thank you, Captain Bly, for bringing breakfast to us. And whoever is responsible for pigtail, thank you as well. I'm, I'm also... <laughs> <laughs> I was a little hot. <laughs> I was a little hot. I'm sorry. Uh, you keep turning our start back from when you come up from eating. Like we did the first, <laughs> the first half. <laughs> We really need to have a cool one of these set aside. This is the second time I put it in my mouth. You know what I love the most about Christmas? When you sit around that table and all the old talk going on. Who do what? Who married? Who? All the good family secrets and funny stuff does come out around the table. So the food has to be on point because when people eat in and they're feeling good, it has taught their business plenty. And then you could get something to hold against them for the rest of the year. That is one of my favorite things about having Christmas lunch. And when my friends come over, it's be people that I ain't see whole year, but all of a sudden in November, they start calling up my phone and asking me, so um, so we're doing this year, you're gonna be here. Something we just can't get away from, but I love them still. I'm still going to cook for them every year, just like I'm doing now, and I can't wait to have them over. So let's get on the home stretch of this spread that we're making for lunch. Now, we have to have callaloo. We have callaloo all through the year, but somehow for Christmas, we want our callaloo still. It's like one of those staples in the Caribbean that you must have it. Now, I not going to sleep over no stove whole day Christmas day and make no callaloo. So here what I do, you know that we cater callaloo pack that we got from Penny Savers? Good. Get one of that, cook it up, put it in a nice container just like this one, nice tight lid, keep it in the freezer. And then for Christmas, you pull it out. Look at that, like if I make it this morning. And nice, fresh, bright green in color. All you have to do here is put this on a very low heat in a nice solid pot. Cover it down and just let it take it time and come up nice and hot. Easy and simple. See, I don't even have to cook no kalaloo today. So we're going to get to that. 
Now, the final thing is the salad. Now, this is a really simple salad. I didn't want to make a whole mountain of salad because around Christmas time, people starting to eat meat and pasta. So I find like, you know, salads tend to waste a little bit. So I like to make individual salads and I like to make them kind of unique, you know, just to give the, the palate a little thing. And then if you have the extra healthy friends, like the vegan people and they, then they could get two if they like. So I like to make individual salads. So I'm gonna start with my dressing. So I have here a little bit of ginger, finely grated in a little bit of water. And we're going, this is our base here. So I need to get the juice of one lemon. You can also use orange, mandarin, any kind of citrus that you like, but I have lemons today. So I'm using lemons. So I'm just going to cut this. There we go. Of course, you know, the flavor here is really strong. So you might just want to do one one lemon okay perfect All right so I have my lemon juice here in my ginger now I'm going to do a little salt a little bit of black pepper of course all of this is to taste you know you have to taste everything right a little parsley and now I'm using white sugar today, but of course you can use your sweetener substitutes. You can use some agave sweetener if you like. I'm going with my white sugar today. So some sugar just to sweeten it up. So that ginger mixing in with the little sweet and this dressing is kind of thick. It's not a runny um, dressing. So, and you'll see why I made it like this. Okay. Right, so you just want to stir this nice and evenly. Now, I am using these, and I call them vintage ice cream cups because when we had our first restaurant, this is what we served ice cream in. And that was a long time ago. So I want to start with two types of apples. So I only need half of each for the salads here. And this is going to go down first, and then we're going to put the dressing over it so it doesn't get dark, it doesn't oxidize and make your salad look less than desirable. So I'm just gonna slice these, some nice size like this. There we go. I remember for Christmas, it's, it is the only time you used to see apples on the road, eh? but now you get it all year round. So we are lucky to have that. All right, so just some slices here for the green. And you know, one is sweet and one is tart. The green is tart, use it in pies and stuff like that. So we have that. So I'm just gonna put a little red here, a little red here, a little green here, and a little green here. I also have pears. So I'm just gonna cut my pears down here and do a couple of slices. Nice and easy. So we have some pears here and a few slices of pears there. Now, this is where this dressing comes in. So we're gonna give this a nice little stir here and just pour my dressing over it. Even as I hold it up here, I can smell the ginger going through that dressing. I wanna be pass this on there. So that is gonna ensure that our salads still remain pretty with a flavor. Now these fruits, I like to add a little flavor to them, but when it comes to grapes, I just like my grapes plain, and that's why I'm saving it, saving it to top the salad. Let's get rid of these. So I have some, just some green, and typically people go through the trouble of picking out the seeds. I'm actually very lazy, and I don't like my friends that much, so I'm leaving my seeds in there. All right, they know it's a love when they, what they're going to say. They're going to be upset with me because I didn't pick out their raisins. I mean, their seeds. Do you know that little thing on Sesame Street where the girl forgot her grapes in the sun and she played the piano and painted the roof and then she came back and it turned into raisins? That's what I was thinking about when I said that. I always liked that little um, cartoon. Her hairstyle was pretty nice. So I have some grapes on top of this red and green grapes now isn't that the most festive christmas lunch salad you've ever seen not to mention when people pile up the plate with the pie the callaloo the pastel the ham the turkey the rice the peas 
where the salad going to fit. So it's a really good idea just to make the salad separate. Now, I have to make a few more of these to make sure everybody has their own individual salad. So I'm gonna make some of these. I'm gonna get dressed. I'm gonna put on my fancy Dan Dan, as my grandfather used to say, just in time for when my guests start to arrive.